hey guys welcome to the data tech channel hope you guys are doing well and staying safe uh, today we will be starting a new video series on apache airflow uh, so without further ado let's dive into it first thing first what is it like what is an apache airflow so it's a platform which allow us to programmatically author schedule and monitor workflows in simple words we can say it's an orchestration tool which allow us to schedule our data jobs uh, pretty much like any enterprise scheduler, but much more robust uh, with some advanced features. Uh, the term here workflow means a sequence of uh, tasks that uh, process a, a set of data. Uh, an example of that will be an ETL pipeline. Uh, so for example, let's say we fetch a file by API or a NAS location after that we load into the database. And in the end, we perform some transformations. So this whole ETL pipeline is a workflow and uh, the grabbing the file from nas or api will be the task one loading it into the database will be the task two and executing a query to perform some transformation will be the task three uh, airflow can also be used in software engineering or the development operations but we're not going to talk about it it's uh, it's uh, for us we it's we are referring it in in a data engineering uh, context after hearing terms like such as uh, ETL and even workflow, like Airflow can be used in machine learning operations, uh, some people think like it's it's a data processing or a streaming uh, application, but it's not. Uh, we we can use uh, like we can use various operators and don't worry about the operators. We're going to talk about it later videos, but uh, basically operators to perform these streaming and processing. For example, we can use a Spark operator to do that. But Airflow by itself is not a streaming or a processing uh, application. It's an orchestration application uh, which allow us to orchestrate different tasks of our ETL pipelines. Uh, some of the features of uh, Airflow which make it like one of the industry leading orchestration application and uh, th these features make it Airflow uh, like, a, uh, I won't say number one, but like a, it's, it's, it's leading uh, the orchestration world pretty much so this scalability so the first 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 feature is scalability it's like its architecture is like that it works on it can work on a single node or a multi-node architecture so it allow us to like uh, in multi-node if we keep adding workers or executors we it all allow us to scale to uh, as much as possible so we can execute as many tasks as possible it's dynamic low so the airflow pipelines or I wouldn't say pipeline, I'll say airflow workflows or DAGs are defined in Python. And it means which allow us to write our data pipeline dynamically. And um, as we know, like if anything we doing programmatically, we get more uh, dynamic um, options relative to something like which is coming from drag and drop where like things are more static. And the last uh, and the and the most important feature is the extensibility. So Apache Airflow is like a, it's an open uh, source app or it's an open project from Apache. It have a good community and whenever something new comes which does not uh, available in Airflow or like some kind of connections or like anything any feature which is not available in Airflow for the new technology, it you can we can keep add like we can add that to that we can. Like we can ha have libraries, we can add, uh, we can get extended libraries and all those stuff. So that's, that makes it pretty cool. Uh, the next thing is the components of the Airflow. So before we jump into the various components of Airflow, I want to inform you that it's a multi-node structure. Like the picture you are seeing here, it's a multi-node structure. But um, uh, if you want, like it, you can deploy the Apache Airflow on a single node too. Uh, here the main four main components of uh, Airflow is web server, this thing, executor and scheduler, and then the database or meta, meta store, some people call it meta store. So the web server is the, is the front GUI of Airflow with which users interact to manage its jobs. Uh, and we can do other stuff like we can trigger our jobs, look at the status and et cetera. And a DAG, um, DAG, like technically our workflow, basically is um, we can, there is a folder, like it's a DAG folder here, which sync with the web server and the scheduler. 
And the other thing also like the front end talks to the metadata pretty much like any web application where they have their database, it talks to that to publish stuff, like to publish the status of the job, like um, whether you, how many times it ran and all those information comes from the database and the DAGs are stored in a DAG folder. Assume like it's, it's, it's a folder here uh, somewhere, depending on like what kind of, a, like a, I want to say kind of, like how you install your Airflow. DAG folder could be in your like a working directory. Uh, and if let's say it's on cloud, it can be, in in a like a in a bucket or something but like it's it's a folder which sync with the web server and scheduler also and front like as i mentioned it's a front end with which like we as a user interact a uh, scheduler scheduler is uh, basically it's a multi multi thread python process which stays in sync with this folder like i haven't pointed out but let's assume like the area i'm pointing it's a we have a folder here which we call DAG folder and it syncs with the web browser and scheduler both uh, and uh, scheduler is is important like as the name says like it's it help us to schedules the DAGs trigger their tasks and whose dependencies ever had not met and it also interact with the database uh, um, database or meta meta store like if it it's it's the database of the airflow uh, application it store basically all the details uh, for example uh, jobs um, like like dags information status of the task variables connection all those kind of information store here as i mentioned like it's pretty much like any web application would have their front end like which have their uh, database where everything is stored so it act like that so all the like all other components have to interact with the database to grab that information and the last is the executor so executors basically decide how the task so uh, when we were like initially in the video of like we were taking etl um etl as an example so there were like three tasks like grabbing the file loading it to database and executing the query or, like executor decide how these tasks will be executed in the worker nodes so it's it's the executor task and as a user like it's it's good to know like how the different components of airflow works because some when you like um when you go deeper in airflow you want to like improve the performance and all those so it's good to know like a uh, what like uh, what's the architecture but uh, as a user you mainly will be interacting with the web gui or the cli part of it uh, some of the other important um, concepts of Airflow. So the first one is DAG. DAG basically stands for Directed Icyclic Graph. And uh, basically Airflow DAG is composed of the task or technically any workflow is a DAG. And we will look into more detail like what is it exactly. It's basically a Python program uh, where we define our task and everything is known as DAG and why we call it DAG. That's also we look in the upcoming videos. Uh, task, task is basically a unit of work in a DAG or in your Python script. And uh, which is uh, like, a, which is created by initiating an operator. An operator will 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 see it into that like in, in upcoming videos. But for now you can imagine like DAG is your Python script where you define your task and task is like one unit of the task defined in the uh, your DAG and DAG run DAG run is basically how many times like you run the DAG like so every time you start a DAG like when you um, start a DAG means like when you run a DAG Airflow scheduler create a entry in its database and uh, a DAG can have multiple DAG runs so let's say if you run a DAG like five times a day there will be five DAG runs with different execution time and task in instance is pretty much like a uh, when we the, when the DAG is running and sorry when a task is executing from a, like a particular DAG, then like task instance is created. Pretty pretty much like a oops concept when you are like running a function uh, or sorry when you're running a class like an instance of class is created. Okay, so the next question is like where this uh, uh, Airflow fits in the data engineering uh, ecosystem. Uh, so I take a, like a classic example of um, like a Hadoop storage and uh, Spark processing ecosystem. So here we have HDFS 
uh, cluster on top of it we have a hive uh, hive wrapper and spark is also installed on hdfs cluster but it we use spark as a as for processing here and and assuming there is another rdbms in this ecosystem so airflow uh, as i mentioned it's not used to process or stream anything airflow is an orchestration so it's basically interact with all the components using operators and in operators we have to define connections so um pretty much like any process and like i won't say any pretty much like um, any applications to talk to other things like they need connections so you, here we define connections which are used in the operators uh, and in layman terms like airflow interact with ev all the components using its operators airflow installation options so we have pretty much uh, like multiple options to, to install it one is the pip other one uh, the, like if you have a python in linux like you can use uh, pip to install like a uh, airflow library uh second is uh, but if you you want to do the same in windows let's say you have python and you want to uh, and pip the airflow it won't work for that you need to use a docker image or there are like other uh, like other options too uh there is third is uh, like you can install a kubernetes way and the last one is the managed airflow service so managed airflow service where like whole airflow uh, installation and, um, like whole infrastructure is maintained by a service provider so like here like it, uh, uh, we think from cloud perspective so like for example gcp have a managed airflow service uh, uh, amazon have that too so it, like i love air managed services because like in real world or like in any organizations generally the infrastructure is maintained by ad admin team it's not the job of the like data engineers or uh, data users to uh, install airflow and all those stuff unless like it's a, it's a, uh, it's an organization where data engineers do pretty much everything but uh, uh, otherwise generally for installations we have it teams because they take care of other elements of like risk and all those things too uh, so uh we, we're not going to like in this video series we're not going to look into the installations option as i said like we are more focused as a user like what's the airflow then like what's its infrastructure and in this video series i'm going to use the managed airflow services um that's we're going to talk more about in like um in like uh, upcoming videos so that's that's all for um uh, that's all for this video stay tuned for the uh, next video uh, thanks again and have a good one. Bye. Take care.